All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of World with Ty Brownlow. I am your host, Ty Brownlow. Remember, no one is worthless, no story is worthless. Today, ladies and gentlemen, look, y'all already know what the platform is dedicated to mental health, everything in all aspects. Next month, the month of May, is Mental Health Month. Today, man, ladies and gentlemen, I have a very special guest. Let me just give you a couple of things about my guest here. He is a mental health advocate, all right? He is an entrepreneur, and he is a comedian, all right? So, all the way from the Beast Coast, I didn't say East Coast, Beast Coast. <laughs> For those that understand, y'all already know what it is, all right? All right? Rochester, New York, put your hands together. For Mr. Turb Ski. Crowd going crazy. I appreciate y'all. <laughs> Love y'all. <laughs> I see you, baby. Hey, I right, too. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, hey, look here, man. I'm sure going to give you the lob, man. Like, nah. <laughs> I don't know how you want to dunk it, but I'm sure going to lob it up to you. Yeah, right? man, throw it up there, man. I'm going to go catch it, bro. <laughs> how are you, I brother? I'm all right. I'm well, bro. I'm well. Hey, uh, man. Look, first and foremost, man, I'm just honored to have you on the platform. As I said before, mental health advocate. You know, next month is Mental Health Month. Um, I'm excited to have you on this platform for a couple of reasons. And I'll just keep it real. A, we are talking about mental health. B, man, we are both black African American men. We are both African American males, black African American males. However, you want to, you know, Right, right. This, that, whatever. But, you know, there's like certain things that we going to talk about from our point of view. Okay? Right. Now, man, let's just get right into it. Let's just really dive right in and to the aspect of mental health. All right? Mental health basically is something still somewhat, not entirely, but still somewhat taboo in the black community. Okay? How can we as black men, in your opinion, step up to make it more of a normal solution into um, talking more about mental health? Um, get out of that denial stage. We are uh, very prideful. I mean, and not just black men, just men. We are humans. We are very prideful. Certain words are triggering that will make us upset or argumentative about how things really are you know what i mean uh, like say for example if i tried to have a healing circle with the bros we couldn't have a healing circle because they don't think they need to be healed so you change the words to fellowship and that's more in agreement still have the same dialogue but you just change certain things to make them feel comfortable and if we could get out of that because that's pride right there you get what i'm saying like uh the word healing is really bothering to a lot of us you know what i mean because we just carry the baggage we suppress everything and then we explode and then we don't really know we think it's that at that particular moment, whether it's a big situation or a small situation, but not even facing the fact that it was all these things that we had compacted or suppressed. Man, let me just say, you just said something real like key, man, like in carrying baggage, you know, and, you know, something before that, changing your words, because when we talk about, hey, man, come to therapy, nine times out of ten, when you hear the word therapy, you are already have a negative connotation to the word already. Like, oh, I don't, I don't need that. And that's why sometimes you do hear, you know, especially in the black community, people try to clown mental health. Oh, you know, you going to talk to your person. You going to do this. I don't need nobody all up in my business. But right. If you're changing words around, like you said, from therapy to fellowship, oh, well, hell, me and the boys going down here to the corner of the fellowship, you know, we're going to talk about this, that, and the other. That is a form of therapy. We're just not calling it therapy, you know? Right. So I do agree. Words do matter sometimes, you know, and, and especially us as African Americans, 
you know, it matters a lot because how we label something uh, determines, you know, how we're going to, you know, go forth in either solving the issue or just let the issue be. So, okay, okay, all right, all right, brother, all right. Now, when it comes to adversity, you know, um, I have a man, I have a motto, and, or I have a saying. Some of the first adversity you will ever encounter in life won't be necessarily from the outside world caving in on you. It's going to come from the inside. It's going to come from family. It may come from, you know, real close friends that, you know, just may grow up next door to that are just like family or what have you. And mentally, as you said, or just a few minutes ago, some things can be triggered. You know what I'm saying? There may be a certain experience. There may be a, like the way you grew up or what have you. And, you know, there are certain aspects of that that you carry throughout your life. But sometimes, you know, let's just keep it real. Even within the African-American, you know, community. Like, I know how I grew up sometimes. Me and my cousins, man, we roast each other. All right. You know what I'm saying? Right. They going to say something. I'm going to say something. I'm gonna say so. They gonna say so. But sometimes, like these, sometimes what we think are jokes aren't really jokes. It's how people really see us. That's how they view us. You know what I'm saying? And we can carry that baggage, you know, through you know time if it's not really dealt with. So, in your opinion, like as a community, you know, how can we deal with that adversity? Sometimes that we pass off as playful harmless you know fun or what happened well um it goes back to 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 healing because everything starts with self even though it starts in our in the household everything starts with self you can only you can only work on you before you can see what's going on on the outside so that's what self-esteem that's what well major what's, what's, they say self-esteem Mm -hmm. because a lot of those jokes are to diminish and it's killing us and it's even though I was a roaster I'm, I had to learn how to roast because these motherfuckers I can curse come on man come oh, on these, these motherfuckers is gonna let you have it <laughs> You're right let you have it whether and it's it, it could be some facts jokes aren't facts Jokes aren't fucking facts. Let's get that shit out of the way right now. <laughs> like when a motherfucker, uh, somebody could joke on, somebody can make a joke about you, and your response is defensive. That's not funny anymore. Dead. That's 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 beef. Come on. Like we're like, oh, you ain't got no food in your house. Oh, that's why your mama crack at. It's not personal. You've been wanting to say that. <laughs> You've been wanting to tell me that. Come on, man. Come on. Hey, y'all. My mom ain't never been no crackhead and nothing like that. I was just saying. <laughs> <laughs> my mom see this and go crazy. Like, you know, told the people I was on there smoking crack. My mom ain't never been no crackhead, y'all. <laughs> we, we, but no, I mean, pretty much to your point. Yeah, man. Like, it's personal. Like, it's beyond. Like, look, man. It's one thing to roll somebody's shoes. Okay. Like, oh, here they come with them shoes. Ah, you know. Okay. That's roasting, but That's when you, you, but when you start making it real personal now, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, clothes dirty again, huh? Mom couldn't turn them tricks. Da 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 da. Make that money. Woo 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 woo. Now we, oh 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 oh. Now we bringing home life into this. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? You know, like man, I don't go down there kicking it out of mouth when she performing. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh 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 oh. oh. Now, now we're ready to fight. Now we're ready to fight. Now we have ourselves a Will Smith moment where we're going around. That, and, look, and that goes from in-house situations. Why are you bringing? Why are you bringing my personal issues, my personal problems, into what we think is joking? But this is these are things that people have really been wanting to say to you, mm. or really been waiting to say to you. And that's just, you know, misery loves company. I know that that saying is cliche, but that's just true. Miserable people only feel better when you feel miserable or when you feel down or when you feel low, you know, and that comes with the baggage. 
Because if you ain't empty that bag before you came over here, if you would have dumped that bag, this, them jokes would have been different. But I just want to talk about social media and black people. You know what <clears> I'm saying? <throat> and I mean, hell, I ain't got to tell you, you're on social media. All right. You know how it goes. There, man, you see it just like I see it. Like, if it's something positive that we're trying to share, we're trying to kick to you, though, man, the algorithm might not pick that up. All right. I have to be playing that over a certain type of music or what have you, or have a certain type of like caption or whatever to make you really like, man, like, I have to trick you. It has to be clickbait for you to get the positivity. Really? To so reel you in? Right. But, I mean, man, I can show you all kinds of police brutality videos. I can show you all kinds of videos where, you know, we have people out here yelling and fighting and doing all this crazy stuff, you know what I'm saying? And those will get hits. You know, those would be in the hundreds of thousands. But mentally, we have to ask ourselves, like, you know, man, is this the image of us that others portray us to be you know what i'm saying yeah. and then when we get in these situations where we're like a ryan coogler at the bank trying to cash our check you know and we have the person getting the check oh well yeah let me call the cops you know what i'm saying and now you're being treated a certain way then we come out well no that that needs to be this, this. i mean look it has to be one way or the other way Either A, we're going to get our shit together mentally, you know, as a people, come together, really try to figure out some things, make things normal, or B, we just going to continue to wallow in this chaos post-COVID and just be even more divided than we were pre-COVID. So, social media is a gift and a curse. Yeah. Um, a lot of people who it's a lot of people. It's a drug for a lot of people. Okay. You know, um, people snorting likes, shooting up views. You right. get what I'm saying? Right. Smoking posts, smoking followers. You know, this is what they, this for real, this is what they need. Right. A lot of people need that to make themselves feel better. They have an identity, it's an identity crisis. You could be whoever the fuck you want to be on social media. True. When you get off that motherfucker, you got to face yourself. You know how many people got millions of followers but can't look themselves in the mirror? Mm. Mm. They have millions of followers but can't look themselves in the mirror. Mm. You have people who's rich, have a lot of money, but don't have a lot of followers. But they point out the people with a lot of followers and the first thing they say, I got more money than why is that an issue? Why are we looking at why? What does your money have to do with them being popular? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've been popular my whole life. One thing I never wanted was that attention. Though. The attention I wanted came from family. There you go. Those same family members only became relatives. Like you said earlier, they started. Everything started at home. The adversity starts at home or starts within the people that I wanted to be there wasn't there. I was so self-sufficient growing up. That was a, that's a gift and a curse too, because it will be like, you can show me something once and I can master that shit. No matter what it was, you can show, I, my mom will tell you, you can show me anything and I will master it. But that took away from the love and affection that I needed because it was like, oh, he good, he good, he good, he all right, he is. Mm -hmm. And then the other people that needed more attention got it. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So we grow, we grow up lacking that love or lacking that affection, lacking the communication skills that we needed to be able to express ourselves. Because this one narrative that we have men don't cry hmm. men don't cry so if we try to explain ourselves oh he's too sensitive he tender nah i'm trying to let you in and 
know how I feel because you don't know where I came from. You don't understand me. So me trying to express myself and then we get into the argument and the bickering, then we can never, then only on, only thing they hear is the tone and not the words. Mm. Mm. And then we go back into suppressing everything and not being able to express ourselves again. And we just become closed off. What's your view on how social media affects relationships? Definitely in the black community. Um, well, to go off social media, the how social media affected one, like I said, it starts with us. Um, a lot of times we don't know love to understand love. We was never loved to know how to receive love. And, you know, we get into those situations where we can't express how we feel. And then we get somebody that truly love us, but we don't know how to receive the love. So we ruin that. And then we get on social media and we can't express how we feel because we're thinking about somebody else's opinion. We're guessing somebody's going to say something or we guessing. Yo, it's crazy because I was talking to my man, my, my boy the other day, we working out and he like, yo, I got this shorty, you know, he asked me if I knew her. I'm like, nah, I never knew her. He was like, she, she said she grew up in your neighborhood. I'm like, but I don't know her. You get what I'm saying? But what he was trying to do was see if I either messed with her or if I knew her track record because he don't want to look like a fool. But I said, it's more, com I said, you'll be more comfortable having someone out of town and you don't know her track record. Cause she can tell you anything, at least, you know, if this woman going to accept you for what you've done, you gotta accept it for what she done. You know, you know, like get, get all that, get all that. Oh, you can't turn a hole into a house. Nah, we ain't even about that, bro. Because we want them to accept us, but we can't accept them for who they really are. Mm -hmm. or what they done or you know what I'm saying like a killer could become a preacher <laughs> and that's okay <laughs> but you can't forgive me for my background I'm just a normal person that's so real bro that you get what I'm saying like I you know I ain't no I ain't no savior man I'm just speaking the truth man I just speak the truth like we got to get rid of we got to know be confident within yourself before you even try to dive out there in social media with who you're dealing with. Be confident in yourself. Know yourself. Love yourself before you can love somebody else. Nobody else can bring you love. You identify love with somebody else. And the only way you're able to identify is if you know how to love yourself. I've been sober for five years. I've been clean and sober for five years. Five years, six months, four weeks, and two days. Mm. That's 1997 days <clears throat> so I was in denial about me having a problem Word. I was lying to myself I wasn't loving myself I was blaming everybody else for what they done to me or what happened to me or Once I learned how to love myself, I identified love with someone else, but we still find a way to fuck that up. And then once we fuck up, we got to find a way to correct it. Mm. And then it's up to that person to accept this back. Mm. And if they don't, what we do? Mm. Run to somebody else? and we not even healed from this situation, mm -hmm. uh, we got to learn to heal, bro. And back to what I was saying about wanting the attention from, yes, yes. Uh, you know, other people. I used to, I never liked popularity, but at some point in time, I started doing shit that people expected me to do. Come on. You get what I'm Talk about it. Like I was heavy in the street. 
Like, if, ask Coach Diddy. <clears throat> Diddy was on here like we, we from the same block. I was heavy in the street. I used to get busy. Mm -hmm. I used to get busy. You feel me? Mm -hmm. But that was me protecting everybody else because that's what they expected me to do. Mm -hmm. I was the one they called. Whether it was here or whether it was there, that was the one that they called no matter what. Mm -hmm. Me not loving myself, I will always put myself on the front line. I will always put myself out there. Then be upset when somebody wasn't being a me to me. I never gave nobody the opportunity to be a me to me because I was the one that was always out there. I ain't need nobody to call. I ain't had nobody to call. Everybody could call me. I made myself available to everybody. Mm. And then I'm suppressing that hurt when I go home at the end of the day because they ain't, they ain't come check on me and make sure I ate. They ain't asked me how my day was. They wasn't calling me to see if I was good. They wasn't calling me to come to weddings or dinners or shit like that because they already got in, this, in my in their mind if some shit shake right now i'm gonna be the one to flip this motherfucker out right right and then sitting there like damn i like to get dressed i like to look nice you know i clean up i got a sense of humor but they don't know that hmm. damn, look. and i said this to a therapist one time um i was like you know my favorite characters are super villains. And they were like, why? Because you don't know their story. Because you don't know their story. And you always assume that a motherfucker just wakes up one day, ha ha ha, I'm evil. No, they're not, no. Like, this is some stuff, like, shit's been happening to them in some form of fashion, you know, over, like, the course of either, like, their life you know what I'm saying? It was a very tragic event that other factors led up to, 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 you know, end up turning them, you know, a certain type of way. Like, there's always something more behind the scenes. But we don't dive into that because all we do is we see them for who they are at the end. And that's the hell. <clears throat> and now... We didn't already cover this mental health, but I didn't already say, man, comedian. An entrepreneur. Let's talk about this entrepreneur side real quick, man. Now, okay. you have your own clothing line. Can you tell us all about this? Okay. Uh, so, my clothing line is pronounced Turbo. You know, my name is spelled T-U-R-B-O. But this spelling right here, I came up with this spelling because the first thing in my mind was, nobody is going to rock my name. Hmm. But I caught myself. I caught myself. And then I like praise the way it was spelled because somebody's gonna rock my name. Anything you do, you carry yourself as the brand. You are the brand. You model the brand. You market the brand. You be the brand. That's my motto, you know? And anything I do, like, I just wanna be the best representation of it. You know what I'm saying? So I want people to put on my stuff and smile. You know, a lot of people made it, made the jokes or the pronunciation. It was like turbo and you know, all this weird stuff. And I'm like, no, no, it's just turbo. You know what I mean? It's French, it's Creole. You know what I mean? And a lot of people don't know that, but <clears throat> yeah, man. You know, I, I'm proud of the, the person that I am. Right. You know, right. I right now at this point, um, I don't have no room for error. Okay. I, you know, I know mistakes is gonna happen. I know uh, things are gonna happen. Like, you know, uh, I am, the 2022 has been, you know, rough for me. I, February, my, I lost everything in the house fire. Mm -hmm. Sorry to hear that, bro. My spirit wasn't broken. I ain't losing my spirit. I may have lost everything material wise, but I ain't losing my spirit. Last month, my little brother was killed. Everybody told me to stay focused, stay the course. Everybody had advice. So I closed myself off. I wasn't talking to them. I, I wasn't talking to people because I'm not interested in your in your ways. You're, don't tell me nothing cliche. 
Mm. Don't tell me it's going to be all right because you don't know where I am. Mm. Don't tell me you're going to be okay because I'm not. Mm. But me speaking this, like I'm highly emotional, bro. Like I've been in an emotional state, but my spirit is still uplifted. Mm. You know, I got everybody telling me, uh, you know, stay strong. Mm -hmm. Who said I was weak? Who, who told you I was weak? Because you see me crying. Because you see me. All I'm doing is reevaluating and resetting. Man. You know, I have my days, bro. I have my days because it's a battle. It's a mental battle because I know where I came from. And the first thing people came to me and said was, we don't want you to go back to your old ways. We don't want you to do this. We don't want you to do that. Why you never said this before this happened? Hmm. Why wait until tragedy comes to tell me that you don't want me to go back to my old ways? I would have respected it more because every day I have these battles. Just because I lost my brother doesn't mean I don't have these battles on an everyday basis. I never went to a group. I never went to meetings. Everything I did was on my own and I regret it because I didn't have nobody to talk to. <sighs> you said some real profound shit, man. And I really want to speak on this and I really want to be as transparent as possible about this, especially us as black men. Sometimes, man, like you just talked about advice and you said some other shit too. Like, we don't want you to go back to your old way. So when I was out here doing the dumb shit that was cool for you when I was out here doing this dumb shit, you know what I'm saying? Because you needed something. You needed a service. You needed some type of service, you know what I'm saying? Whether it was a walk home, per man, you know you needed to go down the block. Whatever the hell it was, you needed a service. So it was cool for me to act the way I did then. But now that I'm having all these type of like adversities or whatever, you know, I'm losing family members. I'm, man, this happened, you know, my man, my belongings and things of that nature have, you know, burnt down and have left me, you know. But even though you're saying it yourself on the inside, man, spirit's still up, yo. My spirit's still up. My spirit's still up. People will come to you and. Honestly, you know, Turbski, I'm not I'm not even joking when I say this, but I really do believe this shit, man. People are only offering advice sometimes because they really like to hear them fucking selves talk. I don't really believe they're solution oriented at all, dude. They're not fucking solution oriented, man. People are only bombarding on you the bullshit that they think you want to hear because it satisfies their ego. Because and regurgitating what they heard. Man, and not 95% of the shit that you've heard is bullshit. You know what I'm saying? I'd rather you say some shit to me like, yeah, you know what, Terpski, man? Look, nigga, you hungry? Let's go eat. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, no, no, nigga. I'm hungry. Let's go eat. Go oh, eat. You know what I'm saying? Because, see, that's a natural function. That's some shit that I would do even if you were not here. Eventually, I would do it. All right? Like, man, that's not sitting up there rambling on your ear telling you shit that I think you really want to hear that I've heard. Repeat. Repeat, repeat it because a lot of people miss what you did and what you said. Repeat, are you hungry or I'm hungry? You gotta repeat that. So, they ain't catch man, for those, for those of you that did not catch it, okay. So, look here. <laughs> All right. Everybody's trying to cancel me. Fuck it, I'm getting canceled with you. Right, you gotta fuck it. You know what I'm saying? Fuck it. Hey, fuck it. You know what I'm saying? But for those of y'all who didn't catch it, all right, not on my handyman voice, but for those of y'all who didn't catch that shit. Living color, man. <laughs> oh, God, I love that shit. Man, um, living color. 
<gasps> but no, for real. Something that people normally do in a time of crisis, man, don't offer any bullshit advice because you don't know what it is that you're talking about. You're not a professional. You know, something's real simple. Yo, you hungry? Let's go get something to eat. No, I know you're saying you're not, but let's go get something to eat because I know you have to eat. Eventually, you have to eat. All right? Fuck it, man. Let's go take this car ride. I'm driving. All you got to do is just, man, nigga, you ain't even got to say shit. I'm finna roll this blunt. If you don't want to smoke it, cool, because that just means more for me. You know what I'm saying? And great. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I ain't going to roll another one, but I'm just letting you right. know, because, I mean, I'm saving the rest of this shit when I get home. <laughs> I ain't going to roll another one because you're ready. Now. Right. I ain't going to roll another one because you're ready. Hey, man, you got to get all this shit down, bro. Okay. But, I mean, I'm saying, like, there are certain, man, there are other things we can really do to comfort a person and really be there for a person instead of uttering bullshit words and things that we think they want to hear, but it's not truly sincere from the heart man right. you know what i'm saying sometimes you ain't gotta say shit sometimes man you know what her man look here i know it's fucked up i just want to sit here with you man we ain't even gotta talk man we ain't gotta say shit to each other we could just sit here you know what i'm saying i'm gonna roll three buns though you know what i'm saying because you may skip these first two and I don't want you coming back on the third one, you know what I'm saying? Like, look at it, bro. You can have that third one, you know what I'm saying? I didn't have these first two. Man, Turbis King, we know people like that, man. They're going to be like, nah, 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 nah. But damn, so when it getting good, oh, now you want to get in? Come on, dog. What the fuck was you? Stop it now. But anyway, but no, man, so there are other ways to comfort, you know? Um, I've said it before, man. Yes, there are plenty of resources for people to go to, to talk to. In case they're having like a mental health crisis or what have you. But sometimes, man, it's about this ego. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to admit that shit. You know? But if I have some people out here that I know I can go lean on and talk to. And just get whatever I that's in me out. Non-judgment. None of this stuff. You're not offering advice. You're just, man, I've come here... <laughs> To, you know, basically say what I have to say because this is just how I'm feeling. Man, that shit works wonders than, man, so-called people who's supposed to have your back coming over, taking up your space that ain't really trying to chill you the fuck up. I'm just saying. Right. All right. So. Also, to add this, some people do it just to say, oh, I was there for you when. Remember when. Oh, don't try to say I didn't. No. No. Don't force yourself onto me. No. In no way, shape, or form. No. Don't force yourself onto me because you don't know what I need in that moment. Right. Don't howl me. Don't harass me. Because what you're doing is irritating. It's aggravating. And it's not allowing me to let myself know what I need in this moment. Come on. Come on. Come on. This. People, man, people are so overbearing because think about, think about this, just going away from that real quick. Come on, talk to me. A, a person that's overbearing, you see a fight. These people over here fight. Mm -hmm. Who is the motherfucker that took out their phone? <laughs> yeah which yeah. one are you the one fighting or the one that's gonna take out their motherfucking phone man you gonna take out that phone man now in this day and age you, you taking out the phone jay this is what this is me always been me before that that world star when that shit come i'm whooping they ass and i'm whooping the motherfucker with the footage that was always me I may beat the person up who said world star up. <laughs> fine, they wanted me to get beat up. <laughs> right, man. Right. You wanted to make me look bad or you wanted to incriminate me. 
Mm. 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 Well, okay. So to your point, when they do get that footage, what's the first thing they're doing, man? Posting it. Posting that shit. Why? They want to. They want to go viral. They need the likes. They need the views. They need. The, they shoot, man. They need the follows. It's that high, man. It's that so high. And then now, once you get that high, once you, once you get that first viral high, you keep chasing that. You know what? It's so funny that we talking about this, man. And rest in peace to this dude named Henry Arts, who who was originally from here, but he moved to Atlanta. But uh, he passed away uh, last summer. Uh, my condolences, man. Ah, uh, man, all good, man. Actually, one of the most real interviews I've had. Uh, Henry Arts had an issue with Percocets. All right, and he talked about drug culture, especially in the rap game. All right, but he, but, but like he really talked about drug culture, and he said some shit that was very profound, man. He was like. You know, most of these dudes out here popping these perks and all this, man. I'm going to keep it real with you. A, A, they don't really want to do that shit anymore. Because they've gotten to a point where their body's depending on that shit. Because, because without it, they're in so much pain. Okay. B, he told me. He was like, man, he was like, people think that shit lasts hours. That shit may last 20 minutes. It may minutes. last. It might last 20 minutes. You know what I'm saying? Depending on how much I've done over a course of time and what my body intake is, you know what I'm saying? Like he was he was very vivid about this shit, man. And I equate that to what you were just talking about with like the fights and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, it's gonna be okay, either you gonna jump in and help, or you gonna be Okay, now I'm posting. Now I'm doing this. Now I'm doing that because I got to have it. I got to have them likes, man. I got to have them views. I got to have people on my page asking me, like, what's the backstory? What's this? What's Who's that? This? Da, 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 what da, da. happened? I need a part two. Man, right. I need a part it's two. Not even thinking about, like, damn, why you ain't break it up? Why you the one recorder? Why you ain't help? <sighs> so... Shit is crazy, man. Man, shit is wild. You know what I'm saying? But, ladies and gentlemen, if y'all know anything about me, y'all know I never leave a show on a down note. All right? I always leave that shit on a high note. Okay? So, man, we gonna get off those soapboxes. We gonna talk about this comedy. All right? And we gonna talk about, man, now, I got a question for you about this comedy, man. You know, well... First and foremost, let me just ask, A, how long have you been doing comedy? And B, how did you even get into doing comedy? I've been doing I've been doing sketch comedy since 07. Okay. Ooh, okay. Okay. My first my first video post, I posted it on my MySpace page. You know how you was able to put your videos on your page and shit like that? <laughs> Posted that shit on my MySpace page, bro. Mm, and I got, you know, a, I got a lot of feedback. And I was like, ooh, I fuck with this. I fuck with this. I always have a sense of humor. Always. You know what I mean? Like, man, life's too motherfucking short not to laugh, man. <laughs> and, you know, if where we from, that's our coping mechanism, man. We gonna laugh this shit out. We gonna either cry. We after we cry, we gonna laugh this shit out. Like our shit is cry now, laugh later. We gonna keep motherfucking laughing. Like, <laughs> or think about all the pain we've been through. We laugh about that shit. That's our yeah. coping mechanism. Yeah, that's our coping mechanism. Yeah, but I started in 07, man. A lot of people think I just started doing this shit because they just now seeing me or whatever. Nah, man, I've been doing this shit. But I had one foot in the streets and one foot out. You get what I'm saying? I was out there playing double dutch and shit. It's that balance, bro. It's that ba- so okay. So now, so now, let me ask, okay? Because this is real shit. 
what made you really take things serious? Um, I said I woke up, man. I woke up. Um, I started. We started doing improv comedy. I joined the improv comedy team. First, it was uh, LOL Superstars, then uh, Five Eight Five Viral, and then you know, in between that, I was still doing my my skits and everything. But the improv, man, like I didn't look in my. I didn't before I got sober. I ain't looking in the mirror for almost two years. Mm. I couldn't look at myself. You know, my appearance, man. I look. I, I aged about fifteen years, bro. Mm. And and also, I ain't like the person that was in that mirror, man. I was lying to myself and shit. That's just how I had denial. And then I was on a roll of, I knew I was just coaching myself, man. I'm about to get sober. I'm about to get sober. I'm about to stop this shit. I used to be getting fucked up telling people, man, I'm about to quit this shit. These niggas like, boy, you ain't going to do shit. Not even knowing you. Be careful what you tell motherfuckers because you tell motherfuckers your dream and they going to turn that shit into a nightmare. Hmm. You know what I mean? So I stopped telling. When I got sober, I ain't tell nobody for. So November 1st is my sobriety date. Nobody knew I was sober until Thanksgiving. Okay. They didn't know. They they offered me a drink. And I'm like, I don't, I don't drink no more. My mom looked like. I haven't seen you drinking. <laughs> I haven't seen you drinking. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I, and I knew if I wasn't sober, bro, I wouldn't be having this conversation. Right. I wouldn't be able to meet good people like you, man. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't be able to to admire your your videos. People don't, people don't even know I, I knew about your show before. You ain't know I knew about your show before I was on it. No. I was, I was hyped. You know what I'm saying? You had a few people on there that I know, and it, it was just intriguing, man. You know what I'm saying? So... I thank you, man. I thank you for being you. Well, look, man. Look, seriously, first and foremost, man, look. I thank you for those words. And I'm going to keep it real with you, man. Like, this platform is my own personal therapy, bro. Because it's like, this has allowed me, like you were saying it, man. This has allowed me to meet people such as yourself, man. And to, like, hear, you know, stories that... I wouldn't normally hear, you know what I'm saying? To to really get perspective about things and people that I normally wouldn't get perspective about, you know what I'm saying? And and I'm going to keep it real with you, man. Like, I got people, half the time when I talk to them, you know, it's usually about some a person that I've had on my show, you know, and sometimes, I, you know, I get friends or whatever, you're like, man, every time you talk about some shit, it's about somebody that was on your show. Well, if this situation is privy to something that a guest of mine was going through on the show, why not give you the insight of that person and how they got through? That's how, look how they look at it. Come on. I'm trying to let you know. I'm trying to let you know that you're not the only one that's going through that. Come on. But you're looking at it as, well, man, why are you always comparing? No. Right, bro. I'm giving you another outlet so you can see that you're not in this by yourself. So let me whip it around to you. I'm so glad. So glad you said that, brother. So glad you said that. Man, sitting up here listening to you talk and listening to some of the things you say, man, you know, you are reminding me of some of the shit that we say around here, man. You know, uh... I normally talk about the way people really see you. You know what I'm saying? The way people really see you. Niggas can look at you all damn day. All right. But certain niggas really see you a certain way. And when you change your own personal outlook of yourself, because you know, man, man, dude, you've hit it, man. For you to even say half the stuff that you were talking about, dude, like that's transparency, man. You got to come through with that shit. You know, <laughs> a lot of motherfuckers don't want to like admit shit like that to themselves because 
Hell, half the time, a lot of people, man, a lot of people running around here lying to themselves about who they are. And identity crisis, man. man identity crisis, okay? All right, man. Like, oh, uh, God, what's that name of that? Imposter syndrome. All right, man. You see, you see the young boy who running around here as little dirt. I saw that. I saw that on social media. Yeah, just so he can get some love. But, I mean, man, dude, come on, man. Like, in the end, what does that get you? That gets you nothing, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, and the people that's really riding the wave or whatever, they don't give a rat's ass about you. You just some nigga out here that look like Dirk. You ain't even Dirk. Enable, enablers. Man, bottom feeders, okay? Bottom <laughs> so you were out here hugging around these bottom feeders, homie. I'll be a boy. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, I'm trying to tell you, boy, we get man, hey boy, we go ham around here now. Uh but no man, like you really hit it you really hinted on a lot, man. And let me just say seriously, dude, that's why I have this platform, man. Like I learn from this shit. I get different perspectives from this, man. Everybody doesn't have the same perspective. And I can't go... Well, I definitely don't go, I definitely don't go off what I see on social media. Because half right. the time, that shit's just for play any damn way. And it's clickbait as well. But there's a lot of people who get caught up in that process. And through time, subconsciously, they have this way of thinking of... This should be like this, and this should be like that, and I think women should be this, or I think men should be that. Or if I'm gonna be in a relationship, then you gotta have this. Or, well, hell, I don't need you if I could do all this for myself. No, man. Like, no. Like, that shit ain't doing nothing but dividing everybody. You know what I'm saying? Like, unlearn all that shit. Unlearn all. Man, where's the connection? How do I really connect? How do I really get to be seen, valued, and heard? And love, nigga. And loved. Shit. I mean, man, you know, the other three are key. Learn yourself. See yourself. Let yourself know that you matter. Because that energy that we put out, people are going to feel that. They don't have to agree. (laughs) But your presence is going to be felt. And a lot of people are so pompous with it. It's okay to be humble and stand out. Mm. You don't have to force cockiness. You could be confident and stand out. If people mistake your confidence for arrogance, that's something within them because they want that confidence. They can learn from that shit. Or they could go away from it. But you don't have to change who you are to please the world. Just be better to yourself. Be greater to yourself. Mm. And these are these are things that we that we fail. A lot of people don't know this is what you got to do. You got to forgive yourself for the lacks, for the missed opportunities, for the 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 things that has happened to you, the things that you've done to other people. The things that people have done to you because holding them grudges ain't doing nothing but aging you in the worst way. And when when I say aging you, I'm just not talking about appearance. Mm -mm. We all going to be seasoned that some way as we could be over. (laughs) We could be over seasoned, man. You know, you know how many people that. That love to talk, but nothing positive come out of their mouth. Hmm. I got family members like that. (laughs) And that's, you know, that's, that will, that's how generational curses are created. Yeah. Think about growing up in a house with somebody that's, that's so bitter. That is going to rub off on you unless you get, remove yourself from that situation. Unlearn that shit. Learn from it. Unlearn the shit that you was taught. Learn from what you unlearn and create a whole new, new. <laughs> no, create. So, the, so, real quick, back to the original point: how people really see you. 
okay? How I really see you versus how you see yourself, all right? Because we, not to, man, dude, unless we're really in tune to, you know, to pretty much what we got going on, and that takes time, all right? But before you even get to that point, you're not really in tune to who you are as a person. Man, as you said earlier, misery loves fucking company. All right. And how people see you sometimes, they may see the man. Let me tell you right now, somebody sees the comedian Terpsky. They see the entrepreneur in Turbski. They see the mental health advocate in Turbski. But I don't want fucking Turbski to get off the goddamn curb. I don't even want the motherfucker off the porch. Okay? So, I'm going to find some way to stop his motion from him getting up to even try to get off the porch. You know what I'm saying? So, it was fucking luck. Man. Well, no. But, you know, I'm saying, like, before. No, I'm stuff. talking about for them. Yeah, yeah, about right. For them. You know what I'm saying? It's fucking luck. <laughs> but I'm going to do, you know. do any and everything I can to destroy the image you have of yourself and put the image I want you to have. Because this is how I see you. And I only reason why I'm looking at you like this is because I ain't got shit going on. And you really about to do some shit that I'm not about to do and I don't want to be the nigga sitting on the bench five years later and you coming back and you rolling through oh, you know how many people look at you that way hmm think about it you know hmm. how many people look at you that way you know how many people upset that you got this show you know how many people are comparing you to other shows but not looking at you in your own lane they see you in a in a clutter fuck of all cluster fuck of all different radio shows or podcasts or visuals. Mm-hmm. Man, you just gotta let I'm one of God's favorites, bro. And I know you one of God's favorites because I wouldn't even be right here. I appreciate that, bro. I appreciate I know you I know you one of God's favorites, bro. I know that shit, man. Hey, man, look. I tell people, ain't no such thing as coincidences, man. Like, shit happens for a fucking reason. Like, if I wasn't sober, bro, I wouldn't be here. And let me just say, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad we having this conversation. All right? Like, man, for real. So. Another, another transparency, because let's get back to mental health real quick. A lot of people don't understand this. A lot of people don't know. The only thing I ever failed at in life was killing myself. Mm, that's real. That's real. I tried to commit suicide in 2013. Mm. Thought about it again. But I was like, damn, I can't even do that shit good enough. Mm. I'm here for a reason. I was supposed to be a goner. No matter what route I took to do it, people people will find some negativity in that. Oh, if he really wanted to kill himself, he just would have shot himself in the head. I ain't have a gun on him. I wanted to go out real smooth, real subtle, real calm. I saw, you know when people say they, they see the light? Mm-hmm. Bro, that light wasn't to heaven gates. That light was to that road that I need to be on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go through these things. These I call them strength builders. Hmm. Character builders. Come on. Come on. What I'm going through isn't gonna define me, but it's gonna strengthen me. Mm-hmm. How I react to the shit that I go through will define. Me. I'm not going to shortcut myself. I'm going to face everything that I'm going through. I may not know the words of how I'm feeling in that moment, but I'm going to let you know I do feel some type of way. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to deny. I'm not going to run around and just say I'm okay. Hmm. Hmm. Like I'm repeated. I tried to off myself in 2013. The shit didn't work. 
I know I'm here for a reason because that day I was supposed to be gone. Even if the reason was for me just to have this conversation right here, talk to everybody and let them know it's okay to be you. It's okay to let the world know that you're not okay. It's okay to talk to other people. It's okay to laugh. It's okay to be happy. You don't have to be miserable. I make people, so many people come to me and tell me that my skits saved them. Somebody, I promise you, I can show you messages where somebody told me my skits saved their life. So you think I'm going to stop doing what I'm doing? I'm using my platform to open up these gates and let y'all know, yo, I'm human. I go through shit, but we still going to have a good time along the way. We talk about leaving empty around here. Man. All right. When you leave, when it's all said and done. And I'm going to be real with you. The reason why you didn't leave. You weren't empty, bro. You still had shit you had to do. You were still full. Okay. All right. So when we leave this earth, man, I talk about leaving empty. No fucking regrets about shit. You know what I'm saying? You've done everything you needed to do. You didn't live the life you needed to live. Man, it is what it is at this point. Man, I have gone on. Okay. But when you leave empty, there is a legacy that is always left. You know what I'm saying? What what will be the legacy of Turb Ski to those people that you know you are really close to? The legacy wouldn't be to the people that. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. I'm sorry. Nah. People look, that you're close to, but for those who just don't know. The legacy, the legacy would be me reaching the people that I didn't know. I'm trying to be in your home some way, shape, or form. I'm trying to, <laughs> I want them to know my name, not in the sense of just an actor or a comedian or when they see, when, when people speak my name, I want them to know love, bro. When you speak my name, I want you to feel love. I'm not God, but I'm God-like. I'm created in the image of him. I'm not God. I do have a brand called the Beard Gods, but <laughs> I am not God. But I am created in the image of him. And this legacy I want y'all to know about, feel, believe, is love, bro. But you got to love yourself before you can love anybody. Else. On that note, how can people, man, seriously, if people want to get in contact with you, man, people watching this want to reach out to you, you know, like to say what's up or whatever. Hey, you know, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? Social media, websites, what have you? How can they do it? Okay, my my social media is Turbski, T-U-R-B-S-K-E-E. -E. That's on all platforms. Um my website for my clothing is the turbo but the link is in the bios on my pages um what else you said um uh, you got a yeah website? my huh you got a website yeah yeah Y turbo okay U R B B A U X. um we're going no it's the turbo that's the website the turbo but um you know, I I do act. My IMDB page is Turbo Kyle Ramon Lewis, full name. <laughs> okay, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, full name. So if y'all wanna, uh, but you could go on the IMDB and just type in Turbski, everything will pop up. But yeah, social media, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Turbski, T U R B S K E E. Don't be afraid to reach out, holler at me. You know what I'm saying? Real down to earth, man. We could laugh, we could cry, but we're going to laugh more than we cry. After we 
if you cry ugly, we gonna we gonna figure that out. We gonna try to figure that shit out at first. I cry ugly, bro. I ain't gonna hold you. Real life, I cry. I get to doing the bank head bounce. <laughs> I cry ugly as shit, bro. I ain't gonna hold you. Uh, I have come to my last question though, and this is the question that my show is known for. So I gotta, I just gotta hit you with it now. Term ski. What is the one word that best describes you, and why? Amazing. Mm, come on. Talk to me. Amazing. Because I learned. I learned what it took to. Be better and keep going. Uh, I, it amazed me that I learned how to believe in myself. It amazed me that I learned how to love myself. It amazed me that. I learned how to rebuild. You know, I destroyed myself. Mm -hmm. I blamed it on the world. Mm -hmm. If you see a man building a bridge by himself, which one's, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. I rebuilt that bridge, bro, by myself. So, with God's help, you know, but mm -hmm. God body, God light, you know. Amazing. Beacon, and I like Beacon because, man, dude, you are the light, man. Like, you know, in order to be that light, you have to have go through the dark. You know what I'm saying? You have to process everything that was going on in fucking dark in order to be the fucking light. You know what I'm saying? And now that you have come out on the other end, yeah, I'm here for everybody to talk to. I'm here for everybody, like, man, when y'all needed me for the dumb stuff back then, it wasn't an issue for you to call? Yeah. Now y'all can call me on like the not so dumb stuff. And that's how I know what you really think of me, how you really see me. I just made a post the other day. I was like, I'm no longer available for these list of things. <laughs> if I'm not invited to these list of things. You tell me you love me at a funeral, but you can't invite me to your wedding. You tell me somebody, I we need to get together because somebody died or, you know, I'm going through something with my wife. Oh, that same wife you married at that wedding you ain't invited to? Oh, my kids, my kids sick, man. We need, you know, we need everybody at the hospital. The same kids who birthday parties that was just, that my kids wasn't invited to. I'm going to be there for them. I ain't going to take it out on them. But you need to know what you did. You know what I mean? So think about that. I'll just hit you with one. I need you to help me. Give me some advice about I'm going through with my wife. That same wife who what, you married and I wasn't invited to that wedding. Where your best man at? <laughs> But no, that's so. Look, I honestly think they don't invite me. I think they don't invite me because I'm gonna get real dapper, real cleaner than them. I'm gonna put that shit on, bro. Hey, hey, no, look, 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 bro. Oh. Look, what hey. time? I put that shit on. You hear me? And I'm gonna keep this so real, man. Look, truth be told, I would. I wanted a particular type of wedding. She wanted. A particular type of wedding you know and it's just one of those things of okay am i gonna argue this shit down to like his final fucking like degree or you know what fuck it okay yeah you go ahead and take that shit i don't really give a rat's ass i'm getting the cheapest shit i can find for whatever because i'm only going to have this on for however many minutes man after that man after homie says what did what the hell he got to say? Man, man, you may now kiss the bride. Fuck it. Shit. Out. I'm taking all this shit off. I'm putting all the shit that makes me comfortable now. You know what I'm saying? But I hear you, though, man. And, you know, that's pretty whack. Because if you think that, man, even though I am going to be more fly than your ass, you know what I'm saying? I mean, that's just truth. You know what I'm saying? Like, you ain't lying. Nah, but I on that. It, I stick that shit. Yeah, <laughs> right. But... That should never be a reason for you to be clown, man. It, 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 bruh. And that just goes back to the shit we were talking about, man. Like, 
I'm cool enough for you to like contact me on this bullshit. But when this was really going on, some shit that I really wanted to come to or whatever, or really would have felt accepted at, you didn't invite me to that because you only see me for these certain things and not for the overall picture of the spectacular, marvelous person that I am. Right. So fuck you. No, I'm just playing. Right. <laughs> Fuck you, fuck you. <laughs> right, straight half day, straight, straight man. And I'm throwing burgers and everything at niggas, man. Yeah, nigga. I'm, I'm, I'm giving them. <laughs> What's up, B? Uh, Fuck you, man. You disrespected me on the grill. <laughs> nah, yo, hold on. We gotta, we gotta get to the grill. Yeah, we gotta get to the grill. Yeah, we gotta get to the grill. I don't know where you're going with this right now, but I gotta say this because people don't understand what you did earlier. When he did the 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 handy. <laughs> They gotta know that was handyman. They don't know you was imitating the character from a living color. Yes, I was not making fun of please people. Of anybody handicapped or no, this right. in no way, shape, or form. Yeah. It was a character on in living color played by Damon Wayne's name. Oh, handyman. handyman. Okay. He's a handicapped superhero. <laughs> Cause I don't want y'all coming for me and be like, I seen what you did. Nah, hey, for real. The, the man, look. Okay, come on now. Hey, but no, hey man, hey, 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 bro. I just have to take it old school, okay? Because <laughs> sometimes you gotta break it down for him, sir. You know, yeah, like, don't know, man. So I had to educate him, man. I'm a movie buff, a TV show buff, man. I've been doing this for man. Look, man, be knowing. No, man. Uh, <laughs> but no, man. Hey. Brother, seriously, seriously, no Hollywood talk, none of that BS. Man, you have to come back, okay? I don't hear that's ass what it's for. We can have another mental health conversation. Man, some Father's Day shit, I don't give a rap. I don't care, bro, all right? Yeah, bro. Routine, whatever, all right? Man, D these doors, man, and I don't even mean to be on the church shit, but the doors to work to Ty Brown are always open for a third ski to come back, bro. Whenever, whenever you need me, bro, I'm always around, bro. I promise you that. You got my word. That's what's up, man. I, man, appreciate that to the most, man. And ladies and gentlemen, I know we've been cracking up. And I, man, we've been being real. You didn't heard the explicit and all that. But this is real conversation from real people about real things that we all can learn from. Okay? And I know that there's somebody out here that this conversation is going to reach and it's going to affect them in a positive way. And hopefully you turn your life around and man, you'll be sitting on the other side, like my man Turb Ski here, you know what I'm saying? And hopefully I'll be talking to you about everything else. And on that note, man, ladies and gentlemen, this has been Word with Ty Brownlow. I have been your host, Ty Brownlow. Remember, no one is worthless, no story is worthless. Follow me, all social media platforms, Word with Ty Brownlow. Or go to my website, tybrownlow.com. Get this wonderful conversation. Plus other great conversations. Turbski! We out, bro. My God. Peace. <laughs>